guys, CP Monty here, back with another video, and it feels like such a long time we've done a video from here. However, we are here with one today. Now, the other day, I was asked the question, can you wash your PC? My general answer to that was, no, don't ever wash your PC. The reason for that is electronics and water never mix. However, when I got home, that idea of can you wash your PC stayed in my head, so just like everyone else, I jumped on YouTube to see if anyone had made a video, and to my surprise, the only video of someone vaguely washing a PC was shooting it with the shotgun and throwing it in a pool of water whilst it was plugged in, then fishing it out and saying, well, it doesn't work anymore. So, um, yeah, there was no one really doing that. Now, obviously, washing your PC is a terrible idea. Now, there's different warnings all over the place, but let me just say this right here before we go any further. There are words on the screen, there's words in the comments and in the description, and I'm going to say this right now, don't do this. This video is intended for entertainment only and not for a guide. If you use this as a guide, there's a chance you may damage or even kill your system. I'm also too not responsible for any systems you decide to wash, so I'm not responsible for anything like that. Again, this is for entertainment purposes to see what really happens if you do wash your computer, and this is not a guide at all. Do not follow this as a guide. Now that we got that out of the way, also too, don't even think about doing this already, it sounds like a bad idea and I know there's going to be people down there saying, this is a terrible idea, blah blah blah, but honestly there's no one else doing this and I really do want to know, can you wash your computer properly? Now what do I mean by properly? Well, what I mean by that is letting things discharge and not just taking it from being plugged in and throwing water on it and actually doing it properly. So let's get into the system that we're planning on washing today. Now I'm going to get to the parts and then I'm going to explain why we chose them because there's quite a lot of reasons why so if you're sort of freaking out about the part selection just wait until I explain why we picked them. First and foremost was the case we have the Corsair 350D. Again sort of the reason why we picked this was because it was sitting there with no system in it. It was also too a bit dusty and I didn't have any need for it. Now we've already removed the electronics from it so that's the front IO panel and all those kinds of things because this is one part that I want to have guaranteed working because it's a case, there's nothing really wrong with it. So the electronics of the case are out and it's sort of just the metal parts left, which in theory, just like a car or anything else that is metal, should be washed and should be just fine. It's also too painted so we shouldn't have any rusting problems, so that's what we have there. Moving on though to the internals of the system. First off we have the case fans, which are just normal case fans, which we chose because they were in my box of case fans, so I chose them. Then we have the CPU, which is an i7-2600K. Now before you go ahead and dislike and oh my god why are you using an i7 for this project, there is a really good reason for it. The reason is it blue screens every 20 minutes no matter what board, no matter what video card, no matter what RAM you have in it. I bought this on eBay for $5 because the previous user was deleting it and chopped into the chip and thought they broke it so they sold it really quickly on eBay. I bought it and it turns out it only blue screens the system every 20 minutes. So no good for a gaming system because you're probably going to be playing games longer than 20 minutes. No good for an office system because you're going to be blue screening and it sort of just sat on my shelf doing nothing for like two years now. So or maybe one year, I'm not exactly sure. So we chuck that in there because whilst it works and is good to show that the system works, I have no real use for it if it blue screens every 20 minutes. Moving on to the RAM, we have 4 gigs of Kingston DDR3 RAM. The reason why we picked it is because that was the lowest capacity stick I had and I don't have any RAM that is defective or not exactly working, so we just had to go with working RAM. For the motherboard, we have, I don't even know what we have, we have the Gigabyte GAH77M-D3H. We picked this because this board has a ton of problems and I've had it for about a year now, and again, just like the CPU, I don't exactly know what to do with it. It has one working RAM slot, one working PCI Express slot, and one SATA slot that actually works. Half of the USB ports on the back have their fuses blown, and I have no idea what the previous user did with them. Again, this was another eBay purchase for like 5 bucks. I knew it was broken when I bought it, and it was just there for any emergency testing and things like that. So the motherboard is just about dead uh, as it is, but still can boot up and still can post and show you guys that the system works. Finally after that, we have the video card, which is the AMD Radeon HD77 if you remember back to our old videos, we actually did an unboxing of this and it turned out to be DOA. I never got around to sending it back and after making this video where we baked a GPU in the oven, I decided why not do that with this one and it worked. However, I melted the ports mostly 
on all of the display ports, so no real display comes out that's actually proper. And from time to time it works, we managed to get it to work for the B-roll shots, however it doesn't really work in day-to-day -day use. Then we finally have the hard drive slash storage part of this build, which is a WD Blue 160 gig drive. The reason for that is it's 160 gigs, and like the only drive I don't use, so that's why we chucked it in. Now the reason why we didn't mention a power supply in all this is because we're not gonna be running a power supply in there that we're actually planning to use after it. So the green sleeve power supply in there is gonna be coming out for the actual wash, and we're putting this unit in as sort of a stand-in for the actual unit, because we still want to have the water bouncing around as if there was an actual power supply in there. The reason why I don't wanna wash the power supply is just quite frankly, there's a lot of power going through that, and electricity and water is is the worst thing, so to have the power supply washed is something that I never really like. Even for example, if your water cooling loop bursts or something like that in a PC, generally I will say to chuck out your power supply, grab a new one because electricity, super dangerous and personally I don't really feel like dying today when washing this computer. And finally for added bling we chucked in some green LEDs that will be wired up to a 9 volt battery during the wash because apparently the internet likes LEDs so why not throw some LEDs in there for some added lols when they go ahead and die. Otherwise, there's not exactly that much left to do. The case is pretty much empty and we're ready to go ahead and wash. So, I guess the only thing that's left is, well, to go ahead and wash our PC. Alrighty, so we've just gotten back upstairs into the studio. This computer's had some time now to actually dry off and uh, get to where it is now. However, we have not finished putting it back together. Still got to do things like put in the power supply and those little doodads and stuff like that to get it working. However, I've noticed a couple things since doing that. Number one, this thing is incredibly clean. Uh, most of these parts were either purchased, used, or were used and just were salvaged or something like that. So they've never really been clean whilst I own it, but everything is just showing so shiny. The motherboard is almost reflective. It's so clean. It looks like all these parts have just come straight out of the box. Uh, they're so new. Now, the LEDs you saw in the last shot where the GoPro was sitting up here and the LEDs sort of were along here and across here, they all survived. The only reason they turned off in the end was there was just not enough current coming off this battery or so I thought. Uh, at the end of the shoot, I went ahead and just pulled this out and threw it on the ground and was like, ah, screw you battery, you kind of didn't last us long enough to go ahead and shoot a video. However, it does live, so if I can do this one-handed, which is probably an absolutely terrible idea, but uh, we can prove, actually, I don't know if I can do this one-handed. Yep, hang on. There we go. So the LEDs still work. This is exactly the same battery as what we used before. The only reason why this second strip doesn't work fully is because when I was bringing the computer back upstairs, um, I just had this sort of draped over the top like that, and I dropped it, and I stood on it and broke half of the tracer along the line somewhere. So. The LEDs, half of them died because I stood on them, not because the water got to them. And these aren't even proper, like, um, waterproof joints. This thing was just taped onto the top. Uh, this battery was facing upside down, sort of behind the CPU section. And all the solder points that got hit with water were only covered with, like, electrical tape. And that's it. So, like, this is kind of cool that that lives. Now, our next job is to go ahead and see 
what the thermal paste is doing under there because I didn't see any washout. However, we need to make sure we have some in both the GPU and the CPU before we go powering it on because we don't want it to uh, wash out. And I think just sort of looking at the battery, it may have bulged out a little bit. But anyway, RAM looks okay. Don't see any big problems with it. It doesn't look like it's corroded at all. I'm uh, just taking a second look. Bit of dirt and stuff on it maybe, but um, yeah, definitely gonna have to pull off the CPU and GPU cooler to see what we got going on under there. And as we can see, there's no water been getting under there. Looks like the seal held on the CPU cooler. Same case here with the GPU. Water has not gotten under there and uh, gotten to the thermal paste at all. And uh, looks like we're ready for a boot. And uh, well, just got zapped by that power supply, which then closed the lid on the camera and turned it off. But we're almost ready for a boot. Just got to power that horrible thing up now from that power port down there and we can hit the on button and see what happens. All right, so the PC is ready to go now. I realized wherever that other power supply went that it didn't have a power connector for the um, video card built in and I'd lost my PCI Express adapter. So we just grabbed this one. It's a TX750 watt. Again, both of them didn't go through the wash so it doesn't really matter what power supply we use. It more matters about what hardware is actually in there and whether it will boot or not. Also too, my monitor has no stand on it so like just has to link up against the tower uh, for the time being. Peripherals are all ready to go. We got like some rubbish Mac keyboard, but it's USB, so that's all that matters, and like a mouse. And um, they all have to go down to this little um, USB 3, USB 2, whatever hub, uh, because the um, little USB port, that's the only one that works out of the whole motherboard. So um, I guess let's hope this works and we can get going with this system. So uh, let's hit that power button and um, get going. Actually, we should really flip that switch to make sure we give it actual power to go ahead and power our system up because without power wouldn't be good so let's go hey oh well it would help if I had the power switch in the right position and um, why, why is it not focusing use manual focus it's camera there we go okay let's go with this test and that fan's working, but apparently not that one. Um, probably need to do some tests on that one. So, should be powering up theoretically now. The power supply is going. That fan is going. We just got it wired straight into the power supply because I know for a fact that that system number two header, uh, that doesn't work either. So, I don't know what's happening with the system. I don't know why the screen's still black. Theoretically, it should be working because, like, mouse is on. We can see the mouse is working, all that kind of stuff. Um, can we get it to work? Maybe the is it, <laughs> the screen wasn't on. Wow. Okay. Monitor input VGA. No signal on both of them. That's good because we're using an adapter, which means the adapter's not working. So I'm gonna have to go and grab another adapter. Okay. So I went ahead and grabbed another HDMI to VGA adapter. So let's uh, hope it works this time round because if it doesn't, um, haha. Yes. There is our system. It is working somewhat. I think that CPU is going to get really hot, so let's just make sure like we can open a program. Let's open up PowerPoint because that's the first thing. There we go. We can. I think we can type stuff. Yep. We can type our... What did I push? Okay, whatever I did push. The internet decided to do that, even though it's not connected to the internet. So, I guess that works, and we'll have to now wrap up the video, and I'll uh, explain in a moment why that fan doesn't work, because I'll figure it out between this shot and the next one. Alrighty guys, so it has been a little while, in fact a couple of hours since the last shot and I've gone ahead and um, figured out what was the problem. So it turns out all the headers on the motherboard for fans are dead, they don't work anymore, no more, all gone. So I wired the power supply straight to that fan and it worked just fine, so it looks like something may have happened there. But in fact, the rest of the system worked just fine. All four gigs of RAM registered, the i7 registered for 20 minutes then blue screened as it was doing before, the motherboard worked kind of, the one USB port that was working before continued to work. The only thing that really died out of this whole project was one fan header, which I guess is kind of a success. The hard drive that I was most worried about, that was like sitting in a pool of water, that dried out and was completely fine. And even the battery that was running a circuit with LEDs survived through the whole wash, despite the LEDs being wired up, I guess, pretty poorly. Um, and uh, yeah, the only really part that died was half of it, because when I was bringing it inside, I stood on it when it fell on the ground and I broke the traces. So that's really the only thing that died out of all this and kind of left me a little bit speechless as to how this actually survived 
and worked without much of a problem. Now it does go without saying that I did a lot of work to prep this system before we went ahead and washed it. Whilst I didn't show it, I probed just about every part of that computer to get any charge out of it. I made sure it was grounded and had no problems there and there was literally no charge left in any capacitors or any part of this computer. I did about an hour or two of probing the system to get all the electricity out so it wouldn't go ahead and short out. So in short, yes, you can wash your computer. However, it's going to take a lot of work and probably will kill it even if you do a whole lot of work. I may have just gotten lucky and managed to sort of just fluke it and you may be unlucky and completely and utterly ruin your system. Again, this is not a system that I run as a daily driver and it isn't really mine that I care about too much. So I guess I'm not too concerned if something died. However, nothing really died in this project and I'm really quite shocked about it. So on that note, and I guess we should really wrap up this video guys let me know down below if you were expecting this kind of an outcome or were you expecting it to be completely and utterly dead and wouldn't even work so do let me know down below what you thought I'll be really interested to see what you guys think of it and um yes um there's not much else to say otherwise guys don't wash your computer but it is possible thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one what?